Functions are where workflows really shine. Once you know how and when to use functions, you'll be able to make pretty much anything. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at text, list, and number functions. While actions connect to specific outside applications, functions are cards that parse and transform data inside of a flow. The functions menu is split into categories like logic, manipulation, and advanced to make it easier to find the function you want to use. Let's try using a function to manipulate a date that you want to convert into a different time zone. Assuming the preceding trigger event or action contains the date you want to convert, you can create a date to text function to perform this transformation as part of a flow. Just specify the starting date and time, the desired output format, and then select the new time zone you want to use. Text functions let you manipulate and identify data in strings of alphanumeric text. These functions work great when you want to check if a text string contains a certain value or combine two or more text strings into a single value. For example, if you have a user's email address and you want to isolate the domain name, you can use the split function and specify the at symbol as the separator. This function will output a list of strings and in this case, that list will contain two items the text before the at symbol and the text after it so you can work with both values separately. There are four common text functions you'll want to know about. Compose allows you to enter freeform text and optionally drag fields into your text like a mail merge. Concatenate combines several strings of text into a single value. Find locates a single item in a list that passes a test provided by a pre-existing flow. The pre-existing flow must return a true or false value. Split, as we've already discussed, splits a string based on a delimiter of your choosing and returns a list of strings. List functions allow you to work with and iterate through lists of strings, numbers, and even other data types like objects. Back when we were talking about text functions, we split an email address by its at symbol to create a list of text strings that contain the values before and after that at symbol. Let's continue with that example by checking to see if the domain used in the email address is the one we want. To accomplish this, we can use the list includes function. It will check every item in the list to see if any item matches the text string we specify. By specifying the domain we're looking for, the workflow will check the list for the domain. It's worth noting that this is just an example of how list functions work and not the most efficient method. If you wanted to check for a domain name in an email address, you'd only need to use the previously mentioned find function to do that. Here are a few common list functions you'll want to know about. Filter can filter a list by comparing the value of each item in that list with the provided value. You can specify how the comparison is handled by using one of many input operators. With text, you'll want to use the equal to or not equal to operators. With numbers, you can also choose from for greater than and less than operators as well. Length counts the number of items in a list and returns the total. For each process's items in a list one by one, calling a flow for each item. This function is very useful for workflows that require batch processing. Number functions let you perform math operations on your data. You can do just about anything with a number function that you can do with a standard calculator. For example, you can round fractional values through multiple methods for building cleaner reports. While number functions are great for calculating known quantities of numbers, if you just want to add up all the numbers in a list, regardless of how long or short that list may be, you'll want to use the sum function in the list category. Now that you're familiar with a handful of commonly useful functions, you might be wondering how to determine the right functions for your workflows. This choice depends on two things, the format of your incoming data and how you want to transform that data in order to achieve the goals you've set for a particular flow. For example, let's say you want to create a workflow that summarizes the state of a mailing list at the end of each week. In this situation, you're likely to have a list of new email addresses that signed up in the last seven days. However, when the data comes into the flow, it's just a string of text with each email address separated by commas. You now know the two necessary elements for determining the functions you'll need. First, the input format of the data is a single text string of email addresses separated by commas. Second, you want to turn the text string into a number that represents the total number of email addresses it contains. Because we've already discussed the functions you'll need to get your data from point A to B, you probably know what they are. First, you'll need to use the text function split and specify a comma as your delimiter. 
to split the text string of email addresses in a list. Second, you'll need the list function length to count the number of items in the resulting list. The output value is the total number of new email signups. When it comes to your own workflows, you may need a function that we haven't discussed. To familiarize yourself with your options, make sure to browse through each section of the function library. You can also use the search function if you know the name or have a general idea of what the function might be called. If you want a good place to start browsing, check out the most popular section of the function library to see the handy functions that have frequently helped others. Now that you know the ins and outs of functions, you can create more powerful workflows. You're not just connecting applications anymore, but also taking the data you receive from one application and completely transforming it into what your workflow requires.